Did you know that the term Bitcoin has a monthly search volume of over 7 million? And still, many people don't understand what it is and why it even exists. Well, not to worry, today I'll change that narrative. Hi there, and welcome to Financial Freedom with Joe. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of Bitcoin. What Bitcoin is, what it does and why it was even created. So if you're new to the crypto space or already have some experience, this video is for you. I'll make everything as simple as possible for you to understand. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now and like the video, as this will help us reach others interested in crypto just like you. All relevant links will be in the description of this video. Now with all that said, let's get right into the video. What is Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is the world's first successful, well-known, and decentralized cryptocurrency. It is digital, and it is a payment method introduced in 2009 by an anonymous man known to be the father and founder of Bitcoin. His name is Satoshi Nakamoto, and this is where the crypto word Satoshi possibly originated. Now let's quickly throw some light on the terms we just mentioned. We said decentralized, cryptocurrency, and Satoshi. Decentralization. So when something is decentralized, it means that it has no singular controlling authority or location. This means no official agencies are watching over and dictating how things are done. So, the supply, security, and everything are determined by those who use the asset. No one person determines what is going to happen with that asset. Satoshi The smallest fraction of Bitcoin that you can get when you break it down is what is called a Satoshi. This breakdown can be done up to 8 decimal places, which can as well be used to make payment. Look at it this way. The same way we have lots of cents amounting to one dollar, that's the same way we have lots of Satoshis summing up to one Bitcoin. It's like cents but for Bitcoin. Cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency is a group of digital assets that use cryptography to secure and verify its transactions which are stored on the blockchain. If you want to know more about blockchain, please watch this video. I have made a detailed explanation of blockchain in that video. These assets are not physical or tangible, meaning they cannot be held like your normal dollar bill or kept in your bank. So then, how do we store these assets? How do you carry them about? Well, don't worry, I'll get to that soon. There are some other things we have to take a look at first. Why Bitcoin was created So now that we are familiar with some of the terms surrounding Bitcoin, let's look at why Bitcoin was created and why we use it. The enigmatic Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin as an alternative currency to fiat money. His objective was to develop a currency that would be universally acknowledged as a form of payment for goods and services without the barrier of location. Due to the volatility of Bitcoin's price, his vision for Bitcoin as a payment method became rather dim. Volatility Volatility in crypto describes how quickly the price of a given asset changes within a short time. On the side of Bitcoin, it can record a huge change in price in a very short time, making it harder and less ideal for people to use it as a payment method. This is a general challenge with cryptocurrency. For example, you might want to buy a can of Coke for $3 in Bitcoin, and 5 minutes later it shoots up to $5. This can be very problematic. The one job that Bitcoin is well known for is being used as a means of exchange between people. But then we already have fiat currency for that. Why did we need Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency? Well, we will talk about that shortly after I explain what fiat currency or money is. What is fiat currency? Fiat currency is a term used to describe national currencies that are not linked to the price of a specific good or commodity, such as gold or silver. The value of fiat money is mainly determined by the public's trust in the currency's issuer, which is usually the government or central bank of that country. I'll explain that by taking us through a short history class. Before now, humans have constantly represented money with different materials, from cowries to gold bars. But over time, carrying gold bars around became too tedious, and the government devised a solution to that problem. They said, hey, why don't you keep your gold bars with us? Then we give you a bunch of paper that holds the same value as that of the gold you're keeping with us, and this paper will be acceptable by all citizens under the law. Also, if you want your gold bars back, all you need to do is bring back those papers, and then you'll get your gold bars. And the citizens were like, sounds good. We'll do it. So that was how paper money came into existence. 
However, one thing to note is that the paper was backed by something, the gold. This was the power behind the paper until macroeconomic changes surfaced. Years later, the government came up with a thought. They said, we will no longer back up the paper with gold or any commodity. Instead, we will be liable for the value of the paper money. So they put into decree as a government to its people that the paper money now has value without any physical commodity backing it up, just their promises. P.S. Fiat in Latin means by decree. So that was how we moved from using paper money backed up by actual commodities to paper money backed up by nothing but a decree. This happened because the people trusted the government to make it work. However, years later, we moved from paper money not backed up by any commodity to a digital form. A form of currency you cannot hold physically that lives on the internet. Although we still use paper money, many people are fast adopting the digital form. So Bitcoin and this digital fiat currency are both under the same category. They are both digital money. So why do we need Bitcoin as a payment method when we already have one running? This is because fiat currency has two major problems associated with it. One, it has no limited supply. When a currency does not have a limited supply, it means that more and more of that currency can be printed and introduced into the economy. This causes inflation as the value of the money you once had dropped. So the central bank can print money anytime they want for whatever reason, which is really bad as it can damage an economy. Two, it is centralized. This means that all the affairs surrounding the currency are controlled by one or a group of people, the federal government. They create the policies backing the currency, they dictate the price, determine who gets what, and many more. This is terrible because it opens up possibilities for corruption, mismanagement, and control issues. A central authority with printing power can decide to control the flow of value in the world. They can choose to print as much money as they want to save a certain bank or institution from collapsing. As what happened in 2008, they can decide to freeze your assets whenever. They can even go as far as canceling the legal status of your currency if you don't have them in the bank, like what happened in India. So from all the negative possibilities that come with humans, it tends to be difficult to entrust so much power to a group of people. And this is where Bitcoin comes in. Unlike fiat currencies, Bitcoin offers far better qualities. They are like two sides of a coin. They do the same thing but differ in terms of features and characteristics. Unlike traditional money, Bitcoin has a fixed supply meaning new loads of Bitcoin cannot be created whenever someone chooses to. It is decentralized. Hence it is not overseen, issued, or controlled by the central bank of any nation. And most significantly, it is transparent. These are the problems it came to solve. For Bitcoin to be used as a decentralized payment system, three separate components combine to make this possible, and they are 1. The Bitcoin blockchain 2. The Bitcoin network 3. Bitcoin itself, which is the native currency of the Bitcoin network usually depicted as BTC. Blockchain A blockchain is what allows Bitcoin transactions to be structured, validated, and stored in an immutable and transparent manner. Whenever data is added to the blockchain, a copy is automatically updated to everyone on the network making it easy for everyone to keep tabs on everything. This brings about rigidity and transparency, which are vital features for a payment system that relies on zero trust. I have a full video on this already. Check the description below for the link. Bitcoin Network A Bitcoin network is a peer-to-peer -peer network in which users execute and authenticate their transactions without needing a middleman. Uses of Bitcoin The major use of Bitcoin is as a means of exchange. Some other uses are for low-cost money transfers and online trading. So now we know that Bitcoin is digital money. But how can we keep track of our assets and save or know the number of Bitcoins we have since we can't go to the bank to request a balance check like we would with paper money? Well, this is where a crypto wallet comes in. A crypto wallet is a software program running on a computer device that provides the functionality needed to protect and receive and send cryptocurrency, for example, Trust Wallet or MetaMask. You should note that Bitcoin itself is not directly stored in any wallet. Rather, the wallet secures keys called cryptographic keys that help to authenticate the ownership of a specific quantity of Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. Whenever a Bitcoin transaction is performed, the ownership of the Bitcoin is moved from the sender to the receiver. After that, the network entitles the recipient's key as the new password for getting access to the Bitcoin. What that means is that when I send 10 Bitcoin to John, I am only telling the network to transfer the ownership of the 10 Bitcoin from me to John. So now the network sees John as the new owner of the 10 Bitcoin. 
and his recipient key is what authenticates this. A Bitcoin wallet can easily be created with as little as just a username and password from anywhere in the world, so you don't have to worry about what country you are from. Today, there are several merchants online and offline that accept Bitcoin. You can order a flight or book a hotel with Bitcoin if you like. However, the majority of the public is far from accepting this. That brings us to the end of today's video, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. In my next series of videos, we will cover more crypto-related topics, and I hope to see you there. Till next time, bye.